Hello everyone, we are starting the module 9 on interconnection networks. This is lecture number 1 where we are going to look at an overview of the interconnects. Okay, so what is an interconnect and what are its goals? We have been studying parallel computer architecture which is uh, made up of several uh, processing nodes connected to each other and every node has a processor, multiple levels of cache, they go through a network interface to the outside network and the network could be a bus or a scalable interconnect. So this interconnect which we have been assuming till now, we are going to look inside it in this particular module. So the network we are talking about has to be uh, scalable and high performance, right? So we always say scalable interconnect. So scalability means that you should be able to connect more and more processing nodes to it and still the network should perform uh, very properly or give a good performance uh, to your system. So we need a scalable high performance network. What is the job of this network? It has to transfer the data from one processing node or the memory module to another. So from source to destination, the data has to be transferred. It has to go at a very high speed that is with less latency, a good bandwidth. And why do you need less latency? Because the processing node is waiting for either the transfer or the receiving of the data. So we should not keep the processes waiting. Hence, the network latency has to be as good as possible. At the same time, because it is a parallel architecture setup, there are multiple processing nodes wanting to connect to other uh, processing nodes. So we want more parallel connections uh, possible, right? So can the network give us multiple parallel connections, each connection with a best latency as possible? So that should be the goal of a scalable interconnect, okay? So just a quick recap, we need a high uh, performance scalable network for our parallel architecture to work at its best performance. A parallel machine as we have been seeing consists of the memory modules, the network interface and the network in itself. Okay. So this network has to essentially transfer the data from source to destination and this transfer definitely is required for the programming model that we are wanting to support. It should do this with as small latency as possible it should allow large number of transfers simultaneously. Why simultaneously? Because we have multiple processing nodes and they uh, could uh, require to communicate with each other parallelly for different reasons. And while maintaining all of this, we uh, should maintain cost to performance ratio or rather the cost of the interconnect should be as less as possible compared to the cost of your processor and uh, memory modules. So what are the requirements from the network? We want it to give us the best bandwidth. So we want a good data bandwidth. And why do we need this? Because the processor should not be stalled. That is the rate at which it is computing. That is the computational rate of the processor should be maintained. It should not be stopped just because the data hasn't arrived from the memory or from another module. Okay, so network should behave as fast as possible in delivering the content and uh, this might not be so easy because the bandwidth which even if the network gives a good bandwidth it is not deterministic that how is the communication pattern of the process because sometimes the programs do lot of information exchange sometimes the information exchange is locally to the node or to neighboring nodes or at times it is dispersed so it is to a far off node at times it is bursty that is very quickly we do lot of communication and sometimes we have a uniform traffic. So the requirements from a program are not deterministic. So they can vary as the time proceeds in the execution or depending on the type of program the demand on the network could be different. But given all of this still we have to reduce the waiting time of every program and that will be affected if I am not taking care of my network latency. So network has to give us uh, as less latency as possible and the best bandwidth which is possible. At the same time, apart from this, network should also be able to support different programming models. So if, uh, by programming model, we mean that a program might want to communicate data values in the form of big 
memory blocks or small bytes of information. For example, the update based protocol might send just a single word whereas an invalidation protocol or when you load a complete cache block, you will want to transfer one big cache block uh, through the network. Right? So, the size of data varies depending on the program and the requirement. So, the network should be able to support in the best possible way variety of sizes. At the same time, different network level protocols may be demanded by that particular uh, application. So, different network level protocols and different sizes of data need to be supported by the network. So, an interconnect has got lots of requirements to be satisfied. Okay. So, all these requirements which we listed, they are required and to design a network, we need to understand some basic definitions. So, we will go into all of them. So, essentially, what is the size of the network? how is it laid out that's what's the topology when i lay out a network uh, every processing node may not directly be able to communicate to the next processing node so it has to go through intermediate nodes called switches so what is the layout of the switch what is the design of the switch and how is the bus laid out how many wires are used what algorithm is used to follow or decide a path of transfer and so on so there are many parameters or many design points which you need to discuss. We will uh, look at some basic definitions to begin with. Okay. So, the primary one is the network interface because the processor goes on to the network via the network interface. Then we have the links. So, links are nothing but a bundle of wires that carry the signal from one node to the other. So, this is very easy. We have this node and another node. So, you want to connect this with a bundle of wires. This is not a single wire, but a bundle of wires which is called a link. So, link is a bundle of wires and then we encapsulate it into the concept of a channel. So, channel consists of the transmitter, the link and the receiver because these wires alone are not sufficient. You need a transmitter at this end and a receiver at this end. So, these three things together will form a channel which connects one node to the other node. Okay, then we have the concept of a switch which connects input channels to output channels. That is, I have a box here which is a switch which connects certain number of input channels to some number of output channels. So, that is a concept of a switch. The link level protocol, that is the way information is transferred over the link is nothing but electric signals or stream of symbols which move over the wires. And these stream of symbols is then constructed into a large logical unit called a packet. So, overall you are just going to send some signals on these wires. But what do these signals mean? How do I give a meaning to these uh, values which are going? So, that is decided by the link level protocol which would combine or make larger logical units of these symbols and say that this set of symbols constitutes one packet or it is equal to one message or, or so on. Right? So, there are different levels of these logical units and the link level protocol would decide that. The node level protocol embeds all the commands in the packet that is how should it transfer, what is the route it should follow, what are the control information, what is the error correction code, uh, what are the priorities, etc. So, there could be many things which we would need and they are embedded in the node level protocol. In a bigger network, we will have such links, channels, switches connected to the source and destination nodes and how a packet or a message moves from the source to the destination is called the root of the packet or the path of the So, path is nothing but the sequence of links, nodes, switches through which the packet flows to reach the destination. Okay. Then every channel which we were discussing is made up of links that is the bundle of wires and depending on how many wires we have we can say that that is the width of that channel. And we also have a signaling rate which is the frequency at which we can send these symbols which is 1 over the clock period. So, if I take the number of wires as W multiplied by frequency, I will get the bandwidth. Bandwidth is sending the number of bits per unit time. Okay? So, higher the bandwidth, I am able to transfer more amount of data. So, what is bandwidth is number of, I, if I say bits or packets or any amount of information per unit time. Okay, so, moving on. So, what is a network? It is nothing but a graph 
of vertices where vertices could be the processing nodes or the switches. So, we have the nodes that is the processors, the memory modules and the switches which are intermediate entities used to connect the different nodes. So, network is nothing but a graph. And when you have a graph, we can use the neater properties provided by a graph to define uh, the network formulae. So, when I have a graph which is now representing a network, what is the time I am going to take to transfer data from one source to destination? So, what is the average time? So, I need to be able to theoretically establish this so that when uh, we design it or do experimental analysis, we can find out whether our design follows the theoretical foundations. So, the maximum length of the shortest path between two nodes is called the diameter. Okay, so every time we want to follow shortest path from source to destination. But if I have the two nodes close by, then my shortest path will be very tiny. Whereas if I have a source and destination in two remote corners of my network, then the shortest path will be very large. So, how do I define the diameter? Diameter is the shortest path okay, between any two nodes. When I say any two nodes, we would uh, take the worst case nodes that is the two nodes which are farthest apart in the network and hence we add this term maximum. Okay? So, these are two opposite words here but they are required. I am going to look at the shortest path between any two nodes and the maximum of the shortest path is called the diameter of the network. Why do I uh, define this? Because this parameter is going to give us a lower bound on the communication time. That is this much time is definitely going to be required for the transfer because it is the best path from one source to a farthest destination. And we are saying lower bound because there are other factors which will affect the runtime latency of transfer. Average distance is the average distance of uh, routing across all pairs. So, we can find this experimentally that is you send a packet uh, between all pairs in the network and then average that uh, distance. Then we need a concept of uh, partitioning the network. Why partitioning? Because if the network gets partitioned, we will not be able to communicate from one partition to the other. Hence, we should always be able to maintain connectivity across all the nodes. So, I can say a network is partitioned if there is a set of links or some switches. If I remove them, then the network gets divided into two parts. Right. So, if I have a network like this, where everything was connected and now if I cut some links here, so only these nodes are connected to each other and these nodes are connected to each other. But there is no path between these two partitions. So, this is called uh, network being partitioned where certain nodes or switches are not reachable from other set of nodes. So, we should not arrive at this situation and therefore, this uh, parameter has to be kept in mind. Okay. Next parameter is the bisection width. So, bisection width uh, is derived from this previous one, uh, previous concept of partitioning. So, network gets partitioned if I remove certain links that is I, a part of the network gets disconnected and I do not want this to happen. So, bisection width is telling me those number of links which if I remove will divide the network into two parts. Okay? So, it is the smallest number of links that I have to remove in order to divide the network into two sets of uh, equal size okay? and uh, if not equal they could differ at most by one that is you have a big network you want to chop it into two pieces how many links will you remove to make two parts of that big network. So, those number of links are called the bisection width. When we do examples this will become clear uh, maybe if you consider a tree type of a network. Right. So, you have a tree type of uh, interconnect. So, interconnect design like this and if I ask you what is the bisection width for this. So, which link will you cut to divide this network into two pieces and those two pieces should be approximately equal to each other. Right. So, they need not be skewed. So, if I cut any of the link at the leaf nodes, I will have two unequal partitions. But if I cut a link closer to the root, then I can have two almost equal partitions and this particular link is called the uh, bisection width. So, for a tree that is a binary tree, I have the bisection width equal to 1, right? it is equal to 1. 
So what does this uh, overall give me an idea that if I cut this particular link, my network will break into two partitions and I will not be able to communicate from one partition to the other partition. So that's not a good news for me. Why? Because one link failure is not a rare condition. I mean, if that fails, I'm not able to connect. My connectivity will get lost. So what should we desire? We should desire that the bisection width should be as large as possible. I don't want it to be one, I want it to be more because the chances of multiple links failing is lesser and chances of a single link failure could be higher than that. So I want to increase the bisection width so that in the worst case even if few links fail, I should be able to establish connectivity across all the nodes in the network. So my requirement is that the bisection width should be much much bigger than one so that we have multiple paths and we can maintain the connectivity of the network. The next definition is for a degree. Degree is the number of links connected to a node. Node could be a processor or a switch. So if I have one switch like this, how many edges or uh, links am I connecting to this particular node is called the degree. This is used for deciding the scalability of the network. Right? So if I have a in the picture, I have connected three incoming and three outgoing wires. So that's the degree of this particular switch. If I want to add more nodes to my network, would it add another wire to this box? So suppose I say I am adding one more node and that new node which I added, even that has to go through this and that has to come out to this for some another node. So adding newer nodes, is it increasing the links to this box has to be decided. So if you say that yes, I'm, uh, when I add newer nodes, I have to establish more links to this switch or more links to this processing node. So what does that imply? That your system is not very scalable because every small change is going to affect every other module in your complete system. So your degree should most of the time remain constant. Right? So if your degree is constant, it means that once you have decide, designed one switch, which could take three in and three out or two in and two out ports, even if you add more modules, the design of the switch doesn't change. Okay, So that will enable scalability of your system. You can continue to add new nodes and build bigger systems without affecting the existing design. So what my requirement is that my degree should be constant. Okay, as much as possible. So a constant degree is good because the physical design will not change in spite of adding more number of nodes. So if your number of nodes increase, still your design will remain constant. But if your degree increases with the network size, then what does it mean? It means that we would need to continue to add more and more connections to all possible nodes and keep changing the design. Okay, so this is desirable and the second one is less desirable. Okay, So those were some definitions and how does a packet look like because we are going to transfer data from one node to the other and every uh, flow of information goes in a logical entity called a packet. So a packet consists of a header which is uh, the front of the packet. It contains mostly the routing information, so we will uh, understand more details of this later but uh, in general it takes uh, information about the source, the destination and the path it should follow or any priority mechanisms you want to embed inside that. So any control and routing information is put inside this header. After the header comes the payload which contains the data. So data to be transmitted is kept inside the payload part of the packet. After the payload part you have the trailer. Trailer is the end of the packet. Apart from saying that the packet has finished it also contains error correction codes. So the header, the payload and the trailer and this payload as you can see it's very large when you transfer it, it will get divided into smaller pieces before you can transfer this. So overall when we look at uh, flow control algorithms, we will get a feel of how this complete blue box gets transferred. We are not able to send it in one go. We will send the header, then part of the payload. So small, small pieces of the payload will move and then the trailer part will be shifted.
Right, so once we have uh, understood the packet format, how do I make a network or what constitutes a network? So network consists of, uh, as we said, it is a graph made up of vertices. Vertices are nodes or switches connected by links or channels to each other. Right? So that's the physical structure. But how does a packet or message move from source to destination? So what is the algorithm? What is the switching strategy? So am I sending a complete message in one go? Does it fix a path? For example, when a parade passes through a city okay, or a convoy is uh, passing through, what happens? All the roads are reserved for this parade to go and the remaining traffic has to wait until the parade passes through. There could be some sections of the road where the parade is not presently passing but the remaining traffic is still not allowed because the parade is yet, yet to pass through that node. So this is similar to a circuit switching where in a interconnect you have to establish a circuit that is a comp reserve a path from the source to the destination then send the complete message and then release this path. So this is called a switching strategy. The other option is we can go for packet switching where instead of reserving the complete uh, network of roads for a parade to pass we can say only a small group of people sitting in a car they can pass together. I mean we are not saying one person should go together we can say a group of people which form in our analogy a packet that whole packet can go using a fixed path but the second packet can again go independently. So we are not reserving the path for all the packets. We only reserve path for a single packet which is a small entity and therefore it doesn't cause network contention. So these are some algorithms or some decisions which we need to make when we design a network. So switching strategy is one of them. Then we have to understand the topology that is how am I laying out the uh, network, how am I connecting the nodes, how many switches I need, what is the degree and so on. So we need to understand the topology that is the physical connection structure of the network. Once we have done this then we need a routing algorithm to decide the path of the route. Right? So switching was telling whether should I reserve a path or should I not reserve a path. That is circuit switching versus packet switching. But routing algorithm tells you how do you decide which path to take. And any such algorithms have to guarantee that there is no deadlock in the system because if multiple packets want to go in various directions, it could happen that we reach a junction in the road where every direction set of traffic wants to go to the other direction but none of them is moving. So you, we encounter such situations of deadlock in real life traffic scenarios. So the same thing can happen in the network at much more possibility because lot of traffic is happening at very fast speed. Okay, So we need to take care that the routing algorithms are deadlock free and then flow control. Flow control means that anytime multiple packets could be passing through the network and when two of them want to use the same path, same resource, whom should we give priority, what is the order in which I have to interleave them and so on. So this is the concept of flow control. Okay. So overall, uh, when I am designing a network, I have to decide the switching strategy, whether it is circuit switching versus packet switching. We have to understand what are the different topology options available for us that is what is the physical connection structure. Here we will see this in more detail, there are direct topologies and indirect topologies. Then the routing algorithm tells how do you decide the path taken by a packet and these algorithms must be uh, free from deadlock. Okay, so deadlocks should not occur, that is the guarantee of these algorithms and they definitely end up restricting us to subset of paths because there could be numerous paths available but they restrict us to take only certain paths. Flow control mechanisms occur when two or more messages want to use the same network resource at the same time. When this happens what should you do? You might want to stall one packet, detour it or discard it. Okay? In any case whatever decision we take it is going to affect the design of the switch. So this, these decisions affect the designs and hence we need to uh, decide the flow control mechanism before we design the network. Right? So in this uh, lecture we have looked at the overview of the interconnect that is what, what is it made up of and what are the different factors we need to take care to give a good performing system. Future lectures we are going to see some details of these topics. However, this topic being a big topic in itself 
we are not able to cover everything in the topic of or in the subject of parallel computer architecture. We will only get a glimpse of uh, different types of topologies, um, a quick look at the different routing algorithms and some flow control mechanisms. However, there are other courses available where you will learn more details of such on-chip interconnection networks. Okay, so, in this model, we are just going to get a feel of how a network functions so that we get a full picture of how a parallel computer architecture works because we have looked at the uh, processing nodes, how they communicate, but the aspect of how part of the communication that is how it goes through the network is going to be shown in this particular module. However, this module is uh, a brief overview and not a detailed understanding of on-chip networks. Thank you. Thank you.